Welcome back. So starting out the week, the first job for me was to get the uh, fuselage there prepped for this uh, final round of painting uh, the top coat. So I just had to do a bit of clean up there and plug a few holes and um, fill uh, or sand a couple of the bits I filled. Uh, but it didn't take long and it was all sorted out. So the plan was to paint with this uh, same light grey colour that we used on the doors to make it match obviously. And uh, we were going to get it all painted in the afternoon so we weren't kicking up dust because we don't have a spray booth to paint it in but anyway this is what it looks like all prepped up here and you know we're going to have some problems with dust but that's just the way it is um, so everything masked off again and just checked and double checked and then wiped down and and uh, all ready for Jeff to actually start uh, squirting some paint on it and uh, this is exciting because once this is done and it's all cleaned off I can start actually putting things back into the cabin on the inside and start sort of assembling everything as a final assembly. And with that job out of the way, I've got these trim panels that uh, Jeff and Devon have been laying up and started to mask them around where they had to have their final trim done because they'd just been rough trimmed. Um, Devon had been doing that. So each of these um, panels is going to get um, obviously covered with some upholstery and I still have to figure out uh, how I'm going to use or what sort of fasteners I'm going to use to hold them in place in the cabin and uh, now that these ones are pretty much done uh, the last thing to do now is to uh, come up with um, a shape for the ones for the ceiling and then that will pretty much cover up uh, every part of the cabin that is right now just sort of exposed as raw carbon so this is just one of the side kick panels, front kick panels there that I'm just masking up there. And um, with uh, those, there'll still need to be a little bit of extra trim going on there to fit around some of the, the lock sort of bosses and stuff, but it won't take too long to get that sorted out. And as you can see, there's uh, five of them now all masked up, ready for uh, Devon to, to go and trim all those. So when we'd already done that other one for the door a little while ago, and that one's actually f fully trimmed and ready for upholstery pretty much. Uh, so with that out of the way, Devon uh, got outside in the nice sunshine. It's actually pretty nice on Monday. It's like 70 degrees outside, I think it was, or 60, I don't know, it was nice. Anyway, so he's outside uh, doing the trim work on that, and just using the, the, um, the little reciprocating saw there. We've got the air hose coming out the door there, so <laughs> nice out there. Sometimes we work, or most of the time we work out the back, but that would have been in the shade and much colder out there. So it was nice to, for him to be able to get out the front there for a little while and do some work instead of being uh, stuck inside all the time like you normally are this time of the year in the winter. And I know you've seen a lot of these lately, but this is um, the aileron. Uh, push rods, the sort of the final stage ones that go from the bell crank in the wing out to the actual aileron themselves and they're much narrower gauge than what we've been using before and they're already sort of pre-drilled but not um, large enough holes so I'm just sort of stepping up through three different drill bits there and just doing it by hand um, because it's 4130 I didn't really want to try and get the machine to do it because I can't feel um, if the machine is sort of struggling when it's trying to drill it so this time I just uh, did it by hand and uh, just lined it up with the drill and as you can see here and just you know stepped up through each of the different bits um, to get it to uh, the right dimension so I could tap it. tapped both sides of both of the rods there and putting the hardware in there uh, that's what they look like so and if I walk over here and show you in the wing there's a hole there in the spar where they go through actually yeah I think I need to feed it from the other side um, and there'll be another hole in the spar that's closest to the camera there that goes through and links it up to the aileron itself and then on this side it's hooked up to that bell crank there 
So that's how that will actuate the uh, aileron when you push on the stick. And I also did the little short ones there that go for uh, the rudder controls. And um, they're out of aluminum uh, as opposed to uh, the other ones that were out of 4130. So I'll take a walk over here and I'll show you what that looks like. So there's the wing and the winglet. And up in there is the bell crank. So there's going to be a hole there. There's just a pilot hole right now going through the spar, but there'll be a larger hole. And so that'll hook up to the bell crank and hook up to the rudder, and that's how the rudder gets actuated. So a cable pulls on that bell crank. And by mid-afternoon, it was time for Jeff to start spraying. So Jeff was spraying, uh, Devon was holding the air hose, and I was providing the light with uh, the little LED light bar. <laughs> that all done this is how it turned out so pretty happy with it really super nice gloss finish on there this uh, paint that we get from tractor supply is good because it doesn't require a clear coat on the top of it and uh, Jeff just puts down sort of three coats pretty much one after the other and just uses the air out of the gun to sort of dry them in between a little bit um, but yeah really really looks nice so super happy with that and now we're on to Tuesday morning and uh, Devon's just finishing off these trim panels now, just uh, sanding around the edges there because, you know, once you cut them, there's, they're still a little bit sharp there with the carbon fiber, especially because it's so thin. So just sanding those edges so no one gets hurt. And I spent a good part of the morning taking off all the masking uh, from the fuselage. And this is how it looks right now. So actually pretty happy with that. Even the, I was still had to do, as you, if you see here, still got some to do there on the other side. But yeah, most of the way through there. And uh, this is what it looks like uh, when I'm done there. So now the job is to start getting things organized so I can start putting things back in the cabin. But one of the things I still have to do is um, take some scratches off the inside of the windshield. Um, I guess I've been a bit careless and maybe some other people as well. Um, and I've made some scratches, but anyway, I've got a technique for taking that off. So that's gonna happen first. And just to give you an idea of how these trim panels look, this is uh, one of the rear ones there. That's the one that had the patch on it. So that uh, covers that whole side panel nicely. And obviously there'll be carpet on the floor and carpet on that back wall as well. And then these new panels coming on the roof that you'll see in a little bit. So everything will have a nice bit of trim done on it. And this is what the, the right hand side front kick panel looks like. That still needs to be trimmed a little bit to fit around that door lock, uh, pin lock boss there. And uh, then again, figure out exactly how I'm going to attach those. So um, anyway, things are moving along with respect to those trim panels, which is good. And one thing we haven't shown you yet, because Mark's just been finishing off. Uh, this this is a spade that's going to be attached to the aileron, and it has a uh, two purposes. One is to add a little bit more weight to the leading edge of the aileron to balance it better, so it's fully dynamically balanced. And uh, the other thing is um, to provide sort of like a kind of like power steering really on the ailerons just to make the controls uh, lighter because of how large the ailerons are. So um, this is all going to be made out of 4130 and we already got the materials or pretty much most of the materials for that. So I've got to cut all those pieces up and um, then take them all off to Brits to have them welded up and then obviously they'll end up with powder coat. And the other thing I've been working on, or at least I've been working on, Mark was working on those spades, but uh, I've been working on this uh, overhead panel now. So this is just the top of the cabin there, so I knew what I was working with. And uh, over the weekend, I lofted up um, what's essentially going to be a panel that covers that area there that's hooked in blue and also covers these braces there and goes all the way up there to the front section there where the, uh, the visors are. So I just kind of had to loft it a bit at a time um, because it's a little bit sort of organic how it's meeting up with a bunch of different things. You can't just sort of throw it all together and using one different thing. So anyway, this is what it looks like. 
there that's the main part of it um, if I hide everything else this is basically what it looks like so this will get covered in ultra suede and then obviously there's going to be a left one and a right one this is the right hand side one and um, yeah, it'll get covered in ultra suede and again just have some fasteners and that to hold it up to the ceiling and that way we'll get a nice uh, finish all the way through from the back of the cabin all the way up to where the visors are and you'll still see the carbon fiber of that center um, section there the sort of roof chase there where the switches and stuff are and the uh, lights and the um and the um that yeah the overhead lights are so that's what it looks like they're ready uh, to go on the machine and there's one of the platforms uh, ready to go so again this is just straight up foam that we're milling so that's the one for uh, the left hand side and the one for the right hand side has also been done and as you can see here it's up on the machine and uh, just getting underway so it'll run for quite a few hours because it's uh, uh, running slowly with a 40 hour step over and uh, even though it's just sort of you know cutting foam problem is when you go up and down the machine if you go too fast it creates a mess so anyway that one's underway and uh, by the end of the day I had taken most of the scratches uh, off of the windshield still got a little bit more to do sort of just um, doing a step where I just take the scratch out slowly with different grades of paper and then ultimately polish it so that uh, nearly done and just been working on the elevator here you can see that's the elevator skin that's sitting there the upper He's got the ribs there. We're actually going to have to lay up um, some extra set of ribs for this using the same molds as what we already have. But uh, we only had sort of one full rib on each side of those hangers and then a half rib. But it turns out we really need uh, two full ribs. So uh, just using the same molds that we have, just lay up another set of ribs there um, for the each of the elevators just to uh, add some extra support. So Devin's been getting those sorted out. I think Jeff cut little core pieces there. So there's uh, two of them, two of the molds there. And you, you can see there's some FR4 core and some regular foam core in there. And so this showed up today. So I wonder what could be in there. Uh, maybe you guys need to try and guess and see. I'll give you a clue. There's more than one thing in the box and the person who can come up with the closest to exactly what's in the box gets bragging rights, so enjoy. You'll have to wait till next time to see what's in the box. Sorry about that. Anyway, tune in again on Saturday and uh, see what is uh, actually in there. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on Saturday.